So using the licensed version of Texture Packer gives me access to choosing the framework that I want where you don't get uh, as many framework choices if you are in the unlicensed version. So this is the paid licensed version of Texture Packer. So I'm choosing the phaser uh, framework to go with my project. Now, what I can do is add sprites to my project. So when I go to add the sprites to the project, I'm gonna go and find the sprites that I want to add to this project. So I have separated out a bunch of sprites from the sprite sheet and I've put those sprites into folders. Zero, one, and two are the numbered frames. But notice I'm using a hyphenated naming convention, skeleton walk down, left, right, and up. Now if we did this and created an, all of our different sprites with these same named folders, knowing that they all had the same number of frames of animation, that would greatly simplify our enemy uh, animation classes because then we would not have to revise that code. So if every enemy we work with follows the same structure of frames, that means we can recycle the class as far as generating animations quite easily so we don't have to write new logic. Now this is a little bit different when we are bringing in just a plain sprite sheet where we say how big each sprite is because when we do it in Texture Packer we do have the option to use frames that are not all the same size and we can adjust registration points and get everything lined up and then it can pack things as tight as possible, eliminating as much uh, empty pixels to create the smallest possible file. So what I want to do is I want to take these um, folders that we're working with here and um, let's see if I bring it in this way, we only get 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that doesn't work as well for our purposes but I can, and the reason I do it this way is this allows me to maintain the naming without having to necessarily rename all of my files. Now, if I wanted to rename all of my files, so each file was named skeleton walk down 01.png, skeleton walk two down, or skeleton walk down 02 PNG, etc. I mean, we could do that for all of our files. But if I use something to separate my sprite sheet into my individual frames so that I can work with it, it just numbers them. And you know that you have to decide what's going to be you know easier for you as part of it. So Texture Packer is showing me it's a little bit unhappy. Their message is saying, hey, that sprite name's already in use. And that's because they would try and export it that way. But if we change how we are working here a little bit where we can say use the folder name where it's coming from that allows us to then generate uh, our frame names will be skeleton walk down 01.png so that allows us to do it now if we don't even want to worry about the png we can even trim that suffix off and then we can deal with that when we bring it into the um, phaser by clicking here because trimming the sprite name allows us to remove that from it as well. And then finally, I can go and decide where I want to save this particular file. So when I go to save this file, I would be able to click and then choose where in my project I wanted to put this particular project. So if I go into my file, go into my assets, then I could save it into um, where the one currently is with the sprites, or I could even save this JSON file into the scripts folder, but I'm going to just save it uh, right here. as part of that. So now I can save that into my folder. Now, once I do that, we can um, publish our sprite sheet. Now it's also possible you can take, if you bring in a big sheet, you can cut it into individual sprites or frames. There's a split sheet option built into here as well. And now we can see how it wrote it out. 
And if I go back over here and go into my assets, then I will see there is now a new JSON file that it just made and a new skeleton file. Now Texture Packer has a free version as well that is online. Uh, it doesn't have quite the same uh, options available to us. So when I go and grab my different walks, we'll see I can stick these frames in, but I can't still. Oh, well, and let's get rid of uh, the frames that were there. I forgot. I always think of those as placeholders, not as actual frames for my artwork. So the problem that I'm running in here is each one of these frames as I put it in just has numbers on it. It doesn't have everything else I need. So I don't have skeleton walk down. So I can go through and add the names in. manually like this for each one of my frames. Oh, and I don't want a hyphen there. I'm going to have to go verify if I did that on the other ones because then that will match the naming that we have happening out of the paid version of Texture Packer. So if I continue this then I can add in all of my other sprites and then I can download the PNG I can download the JSON as part of it if I go here we'll see we have options that we can work with we can choose how we want it so we could do you know vertical like the what it did we can choose compact I mean it's still a versatile tool but we can't do any uh, specific um, game engine optimizations with it, but it still works to use the same import command inside of Phaser as we do it. So I've added the rest of the sprites and renamed them. So we have up, one, two, three. We have right one, two, and down. This must be right two, right three. And then we have our lefts, one, two, and three. So we've now added all of them into our project here. We can see each skeleton, you know, they are, you know, our coordinates vary by, you know, each one is 16 by 16 in size, so it's the same size. So now with this, we can download the PNG, we can download the JSON as part of it, so we get sprite sheet and sprite sheet as part of it. So what we're gonna determine is how we can work with these inside our code as we bring the sprite sheets into our phaser game. So it turns out if we bring it in this way, by renaming everything in the texture packer online, it didn't save the renaming. So we're going to bring the sprites in differently this time. I've gone ahead and renamed them all so they all now have the correct name. So now when I export out the JSON, it should give us what we need. We'll re-export the PNG so we know that's going to give us what we need. And now looking at the revised one. So the original one, when I tried to rename it, am I 01020301 So that would be problematic trying to work with it. But by bringing in my sprites that are all properly named, we can see now we can get information. So it's saving it in JavaScript object notation format so that we're able to have key value pair information so we can work with that as we're going to then work with the sprite sheet to add the enemy into our project.